Okay, so um, my name is Emily Woods. I am in the Wildlife uh, Biology Department, and I did my research project on historical mountain lion sightings here in North Dakota. So to start off, let's just kind of talk about mountain lions and what they are. So mountain lions have a lot of different names, including cougars, panthers, and pumas. Uh, they are an apex predator, meaning they are the top of the food chain and is not preyed upon by any other animal in their ecosystem. Their physical characteristics consist of a tan, long, slim body with a long tail with a black tip and black tip ears. Uh, they can normally range from six to eight feet from the tip of their nose to the tip of their tail. Males can weigh around 180 pounds <coughs> to 190, and females can weigh up to 110 to 130. Um, when looking at these photos, uh, so the top one is a mountain lion in a size comparison with a bobcat. This is one of the biggest um, misidentified animals out there. So a lot of people think a bobcat could be a mountain lion, a mountain lion could be a bobcat. People even mistake mountain lions with cats and dogs and coyotes. So sometimes for an untrained eye, it's really hard to tell the difference between a mountain lion and a bobcat unless you see like the size comparison because as you can see, it's pretty drastic. And then even on the bottom photo, it's a mountain lion versus a bobcat. And bobcats have more of a pattern fur, whereas um, mountain lions just have that straight, flat, tan body. Um, bobcats even have more of that pointed ear, um, whereas uh, mountain lions have more of the rounded. And then even looking at these um, paw prints, cougars and bobcats, again, look similar, but the size difference is super drastic, which is hard to tell if you don't really have that trained eye or that niche to see the difference. And another one um, that gets confused is coyotes. Um, but the biggest difference to tell between a coyote wolf and a mountain lion is um, coyotes and wolves belong to like a, the dog family. The, um, and they have the claws that stick out so you can see um, the claws here, whereas mountain lions, they're more of the feline family, so they have the retractable claws, so you can't see that. So that's one of the biggest um, helpers to identify between um, the feline and the coyotes and um, wolves. So the history of mountain lions in North Dakota is, is pretty interesting. So it goes all the way back to the early 1800s. Uh, mountain lions lived in the Badlands along the Missouri, <coughs> Missouri River and um, the Kildare Mountains. Um, at this time, mountain lions were not protected species. And then by the early 1900s, almost 100 years later, mountain lions were nearly gone from the state due to overhunting, um, poaching, killing, all that. So for some reason, between the 1900 and 1958, North Dakota Game and Fish didn't record the mountain lion data. I'm not sure why. I don't know why they didn't record the sightings, but there's a big gap where they didn't keep record of um, the population size. And then in 1975 is when they began to look at um, verified mountain lion sightings. And so we can see here, they weren't very much, I think it was like one or two starting off, so super low. And we can see that it starts increasing at 2005, and it has that healthy fluctuation. So um, from this, we can see that the mountain, mountain lion populations are doing really well. Um, there's currently enough to maintain a limited hunting season, which is really good to see. And like I said earlier, they're still continuing to rise um, population size-wise. Okay, so the object objective of this research project was to examine the number of mountain lion sightings here in North Dakota and see how their numbers fluctuated between 2001 and 2018 throughout the whole state. So the data analysis for this research project was pretty, um, pretty interesting. It consisted of going through almost 1,700 lines of Excel data. Um, all, these, all this data was uh, placed into like four different category types. Um, the first being the date of the observation, the county that it was observed in, the report type, and the verification level. So I had to look and organize all those. Um, next, I decided to solely look at verified mountain sightings. I was gonna look at um, probable unverified, but I was talking to the lady that I was working with from the North Dakota Game and Fish, and she said that data probably wasn't as reliable as a verified one, so I decided to stick solely to the verified mountain lion sightings. Um, I decided to look at 2001 to 2015, because if you can remember, that's the ones that had the bigger numbers I could look at, so it's easier to go that route. And I broke it down into five-year increments. Um, and on top of that, I also analyzed the different report types, which we'll talk about later. So for data collection, there's a few ways that North Dakota Game and Fish received these sightings informations. 
Um, they can get the information from hunters and trappers, um, through habitat analysis, and even the general public can report it. Um, just to report mountain lion sightings, this is the sheet that the North Dakota Cayman fish have. And you just put in your information, general information, incident date, species, and just all like the location, how you saw it, and all that information. I'm pretty sure you can do that online, and it gets submitted to the North Dakota Game and Fish, and they go through <coughs> it and sort it that way. Um, if the animal is like hunted, the carcass has to be turned into the North Dakota Game and Fish, so they can collect biological information, just so we can see how the population is doing. Like, is there any diseases? Um, just all that stuff, so we can make sure that the population is as healthy as we want it to be. Um, also, the North Dakota Game and Fish send out questionnaires to anyone that purchases a license. So I know a couple years ago, I think they sent out almost 5,000 questionnaires to those who bought a fur bear license, which is really cool. And like they talked about earlier, there's four different report, cl report classifications. So the first one, which I'm looking at, is verified. So that means that it was verified by a wildlife biologist, and there's proof that it was 100% an online. And then there's probable unverified. And that is that it was probably there, but the evidence is maybe 85% there, so we can't say for sure that it was there. Um, there's improbable and unverified, which is it probably wasn't there, and there was really no um, evidence to back that up. And then there's just unfounded, and that's, it just wasn't there. So there are seven different observation types that I came across. Um, the first one was the visual observation, and that was this yellow one. So the tricky thing with that is you can see it's only 10% of all observation types that's out there. Uh, the one reason that this is super tricky is, like I said earlier, they get misidentified for dogs and cats and um, rac or not raccoons, I don't know why I said that, um, coyotes and wolves. Um, so they get misidentified super easily. So unless you have like the trained eye, like a wildlife biologist or someone who's worked there before, um, it's really hard to go off just like, oh, I saw one when it could really be anything. Um, so the second one we have is carcasses. And this is the biggest one and 42%. Um, the most reliable just because we have the body in front of us. We can see that we have a mountain lion in front of us. Um, I feel like if we couldn't tell if it was a wildlife, or as a wildlife biologist with a mountain lion in front of us, we'd have some issues. But, so I think that is the most reliable method of identification. Um, next we have signs, and that makes up about 36% of all verification types that came in. This includes scat, fur, prints, um, anything like that. Um, and then lastly, we have videos and photos. And that only makes up 12%. And you'd think you have a video, you have a photo, like it's right there, wouldn't that be enough? Well, just imagine a lot of these photos are taken driving 60 miles down Prouder Road. You can imagine how that photo turned out. Not so well. And so we don't really rely on that one as much just because photos cannot turn out as great as we'd hoped. And then just some of the miscellaneous ones were like GPS radio collar, could be a mountain lion that wandered in from a different state. Um, we have incidental capture, that can just be a trapper was trying to catch, let's say, like a coyote and accidentally caught a mountain lion. Um, and then close encounter, that can be anything from like walking on a bike. We've heard all the stories about running into a mountain lion, it could be anything like that. But those only happen one time, so not too common. So now let's look at our maps. So I wanted to look at how the populations fluctuated in the state for the, um, a certain amount of years. So in this first map, the largest majority of mountain lions residing here was in McKenzie County. That's right there. Um, they had a total of 33 mountain lions, which isn't like a lot like we'd think like, oh, but it's, it's a pretty good amount for this time. Uh, the second um, largest mountain lion population resided in Billings County, which is just right under it. And that had a total of 18 sightings. So not super high, but fairly close to McKenzie <coughs> County. And then lastly, the third largest population was 13, and that resided in Dunn County, I think how you say it. Um, and so they were good numbers, but not super high. Um, and then if we look at all these other ones on the map, the yellow was three mountain lion sightings, the light green was two, and the dark green was one. Everything else was zero. And then in this time frame from 2001 to 2006, there's a total of two mountain lion sightings here in Grand, or in Grand Forks County, which is pretty cool. So moving on to the next time increment, we have 2007 to 2012. Here we still have the three same counties, the highest, this is around the Badlands area. Um, but the highest one still is McKenzie County, which is the same highest one as last time. But instead of 33, it jumped to almost 107, which is super cool to see that population go up, which is awesome. Uh, the <coughs> second one 
is Dunn County, and they had the second highest of 92 um, verified sightings, which is awesome to see that population grow, like I said earlier. And then the third largest is very low compared to the other numbers that we see, and they only had 22 sightings, and that was in Billings County. And then, like I said earlier, um, yellow is three verified sightings, uh, light green is two, and dark green is one. And in this time frame, Grand Forks did not have any uh, mountain lion sightings. And so onto our last map, we have the time of 2013 to 2018. Again, same three counties have the highest um, populations, or highest verified mountain lion sightings. Dunn coming in first with 60 sightings. Uh, Mackenzie County had around 48 and Dunn had 39. So all pretty good populations, but not as well as the previous increment. And then this one's a little different. We had some little straggler numbers. So the orange right here was seven sightings. Um, down here was four. Next to it was three sightings. Um, these light greens over here were two sightings. And then the dark greens were one sighting. Um, Grand Forks had one verified mountain lion sighting in this time frame. So with that, I wanted to look at how the population or the verified sightings compared to the hunting zones that Grand Forks has, or the Grand or North Dakota has put in place. And what I found was super interesting is a lot of the higher numbers, like in the Badlands, Mackenzie County, Dunn, and Billings, um, they all fall into zone one, which we'll talk about for how their hunting works. And every other um, county that you've seen falls into zone two. Um, so zone one has an earlier season that starts in August and goes till November. And in this zone, the zone one in the Badlands area with the most, um, they have a max, you can only hunt eight mountain lions there, you can't go over that. And then they also have a late season that goes from November 26th to March 31st. And then when we're looking out here at this bigger zone here, there is a, I wouldn't say more lenient, but they have no overall harvest limit, but it's limited to one per person. So like you could go out and get one, but it's not limited like zone one over here. Um, which I thought was interesting. And so the management of mountain lions um, is key, uh, key player to have the population succeed. Um, mountain lion populations, as we, as we have seen, they've had a steady rise in population over the past years. They haven't dropped, they haven't risen too high, they've been at a consistent healthy um, level, and we can attribute that success to the North Dakota Game and Fish. Um, they're the ones that put these laws in place to limit the amount of mountain lions harvest. Um, they created these zones so that we can make sure that we are over hunting in certain areas and having the population decline. Um, they also do yearly estimates where they go out and check the numbers out in the wild and out in the badland or hunting areas or wherever. And they do this just to make sure that the hunting doesn't have a negative impact on these populations. So let's say one year, like we saw in that second map, there was 107 mountain lions in one county. They may change that to a higher hunting limit than if like the next year when there's only like 60. So they really play the hunting um, by ear on how the numbers are doing in these mountain lions. Um, with that, I would just like to thank everyone that helped me. This was a really, really fun research project and I couldn't do it without the help of my advisor and North Dakota Game and Fish. And with that, I'll take any questions. Do they, are they, do they go by themselves mainly, or are they in like more groups or groups? Yeah, they're pretty solitary animals. And I forgot to mention this earlier, but the thing with mountain lions that make them tricky is they can have a huge home range territory, ranging from 300 miles to almost 150 square miles, or 300 to almost 500 square miles. But yeah, they're usually solitary animals. Yeah, I was asking about that, and I didn't really have a lot of information on that because I wanted to compare that, but I didn't get any information on that. Because it corresponds exactly with the oil room. Yep. So, are uh, mountain lions um, hunted or killed because of a threat to domesticated animals like cattle? And if so, like, is that kept in the data somewhere in the game fishing department? I mean, that could be a possibility, but I haven't read any literature on that. It's just because numbers are so low, I haven't heard of any, correct me if I'm wrong, I haven't heard of any hunting 
increase just because of um, livestock depredation. Um, it's usually for like for harvest for like the fur and stuff, but I haven't heard of any increased hunting because of livestock depredation.